four great examples of e-commerce brands that have strong cart pages coming right up. Let's, Let's go. What's up, everyone? Sean Azar here. I'm at Matt Skopak. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Deep Dive episode 44, 44 where we usually take businesses and dive into the marketing and business strategies such that you can take these strategies and implement them in your business however in this episode we're going to change it up do a little something a little bit differently where we're going to dive into some of the best websites and see how they use the cart feature to function and to get customers to buy you know, I, I noticed Matt in the last two years specifically, and we're going to talk about cart pages, but we're also going to talk about sliding cart pages where some um, brands have a sliding cart option. So basically when you add uh, a product to your page, right, a, a, a basically a, a canvas, like something comes up on the side instead it could of be leaving. Bottom and anchored to the bottom, top, side. It's usually one. on the side or and it and you'll see like something pop up and it's just a, it's a cart without leaving the actual product page or a mm -hmm. collection page which is really convenient and let me tell you this this is why because you know when you direct a consumer to a product page and they have to go back you have to do multiple steps and you could lose the consumer in, in doing so so with that said also and, and just to keep in mind having a strong car page can dramatically obviously increase your sales and there's little tidbits that I've learned and you learned I'm sure uh, with all the brands that we've discussed in the last 43 episodes and we've seen a pattern and uh, I guess we want to dive into some of the examples you've seen examples outside the brands we talked about of and they're gonna highlight I'm gonna talk about number one do it let's um, go number one it's bite toothpaste um, I love their sliding cart uh, functionality when you add a product to their cart, you'll see, let's just say if you add one product, you'll see that the cart is divided into um, three, two different sections. One of the sections I wrote down here, uh, just to remind myself, it's complete your set. So if you bought a product and based on the AI and what, based on what other people uh, has purchased with that product or what goes along with that product, they recommend um, other products in addition right based on and there's an app for this which i'll suggest later uh, that could do this or you could create it um you could customly create it which is more expensive again i'll get to that later where they'll show the products and they'll they'll actually discount the price as if if you got it if you got it by itself it'll just be a little bit more expensive but if you got it inside this bundle with if you completed your kit you completed your set here you'll get a little bit cheaper, a dollar cheaper, two dollars cheaper, and you can set those um, uh, those prices in the back end as well if it's the app. And then the second section is, it says anything else. So that's just any product that they have that's not in the cart, that doesn't really have to go along with the actual set or actual product, but they have it in inventory. It's just, it's, it's a similar example is like, you're in the department store, let's say if you get shampoo, right? But you can get the conditioner. The conditioner is, is completing your set, right? Mm -hmm. And that's in the aisle. But now you're going into the cashier, right? And you're like, you know what? I'm just gonna add some gum because the gum is right next, it's right underneath the cashier. He's like, I'm gonna get some gum, maybe, you know, a pack of condoms in the back because that's, you see a pack of condoms there. It's not, it doesn't go, go along with the set, but that's like anything else. So think of it that way and that's gonna help increase your average order value and your sales. So bite toothpaste. Nice. Number two, uh, we're gonna talk about two different ones here, Drunk Elephant and Amazon. And the key to this one is have a strong add to cart or buy now button, as well as have multiple ones on the buying page or have a floating add to cart button, um, which is basically, it's either anchored to the top or bottom. Uh, Drunk Elephant anchors their, buy, their add to cart button at the top, so when you scroll on the page, on your phone, it stays at the top. And the reason that you wanna do this though, the science behind it is, when that customer decides that they want to buy that product and add to their cart, you need to have that button there immediately for them to, to basically access and to activate it, a CTA, which is a call to action button. Um, and you want it to stand out. And the best way that we've seen scientifically, me and Sean have seen, is you wanna make sure your add to cart button 
is a contrasted color basically versus a light background amazon very does it very well has a white background on amazon on all the pages and it has an orange add to cart button so that's something uh, that you should notice on your website make sure your color schemes are in line and everything is standing out uh, another key item that we talk about and i just want to highlight that's called floating cart um, yes. especially if you want to get if your theme doesn't have it as a functionality you could get a developer again on upwork or on any of these freelance websites you want to create a floating cart option mm -hmm. and then also have settings which you can do if it's shopify or um whatever platform that you're using you could set it such that when do you want that floating cart to appear now look at the examples yep. of what other brands are doing is it appearing after the user scrolls past the original add to cart button, which is on the product page. Yeah. So like drunk or does it happen right away? Yeah, drunk elephant keeps it at the top the whole time, so it stays there almost as a uh, a freeze pane at the top. So you scroll up the page, it stays there. Amazon does it as uh, you, they have the original add to cart and buy now button at the top of the screen. Once you scroll, which is on the product page, on the product page. Once you scroll past those buttons, so they they go at a, at a display, you'll see a orange add to cart button pop up in the lower right hand corner which thank you i believe to add I, cart. I believe i'm not don't, I'm pretty sure that's just mobile that that's just mobile okay. that's correct so that is one thing you have to give your customers the opportunity to add to the cart at any point on the product page by having it uh fully accessed the whole time you increase your sales and uh that's how we get more customers all right number two and three. it's number three yes number three right, yeah oh yeah true number That's why three I'm numbering, guys number three frank body the ultimate babe um i love their checkout they also have a sliding cart functionality so again when you add a, a product to your cart a, a canvas an off canvas to the right pops up and your cart you see your cart there and it's two things i really love about their cart is number one you see a timer uh, basically on the top of your products it's like a timer or a slide bar which shows you if let's say if you bought a product for i don't know say thirty dollars and free shipping you'll you'll get free shipping if your your cart is totaling up to like sixty dollars so if you have a product that's only 30 bucks you need thirty dollars more to get free shipping it'll show that so as a customer or it could be just let's say you know actually a better example it's usually like this type of scenario let's say you just have a product you have one product and it costs fifty five dollars right and it's sixty dollars to get free shipping you have your five dollars away to get free shipping now people hate spending money on shipping that's why you see a lot of brands e-commerce brands offer free shipping if they can or they incorporate the shipping in the price mm -hmm. so now now in order to increase your aov they're gonna say hey look you have five dollars left now obviously a lot of their products is not really five bucks they're gonna try to either look for the cheapest product to add on into their cart or they're gonna look for something that they're gonna buy anyway you know like screw it i'm gonna buy this and i'm gonna get the free shipping even though if it costs me another 40 bucks but they don't want to pay that shipping they just get another product it's a uh, psychology there like you're gonna you don't want to pay for something you're not gonna have it's not tangible shipping is not tangible so they get a product and they don't have to pay for the shipping so that's great so that's number one why i love about that number two is they're incentivizing you to join their loyalty program and i think their loyalty program is called hotel pink member so they basically say right on the top, they're showcasing the number of points they could earn if they sh if they sign up, right? The way I think about this is when I go to Walgreen or any, you could think about any department store and you go to the register and they're saying, hey, do you have the Walgreens loyalty card? Just if you do, type it in and you could earn points, right? But in this way, you know, it's boring. You know, most people just say, you know what, screw it. I just want just to pay for it. They have a really fun way. Like people want to join their loyalty program. It's it's a lot of fun. You get a lot of perks. You know, people want to be aligned yep. with the brand, and there, there's all these awesome perks. So they set it up really well. So it is a great way to incentivize or get people to join your program. So if you could do that, if you have a loyalty program, try to find ways to add it in your cart so people can sign up. Because people also, uh, I'm sure we were talking about this earlier. Scroll back, is and Home Depot had this example is you know before purchasing which we didn't we didn't like right you had to sign up like if you don't you can't check out as a guest now most people don't want to sign up and create a whole member account it's really annoying so people want to check out really fast and that's the whole game to this is checking out quickly as possible as quick as possible yep. get the customer in and out that's it and that kind of leads on to my point number four which i'm going to use sugar and kush which i'm a 
uh, part of. One thing uh, which Sean just talked about is customers want to check out quickly. So you should have a simplified checkout process where Express using Apple Pay or usually PayPal, those are the two, or if you do, if they do have to check out and they're gonna use, put a credit card in, you do not wanna have one page that is long where you put all the information in. Name, address, shipping address, billing address, billing information. That is not the way to do it because when I see that long of a page and I see everything I have to fill out, I basically abandon the cart. Like probably mostly everyone here. What you would like to do and what you need to do if your store is not set up like this, I highly recommend it, is you wanna break up the sign out the checkout process into three or four simple quick steps because everyone loves completing steps so the first one is just customer information second one is shipping information and then the third is your credit card application or your credit card information and usually what you'll see is they have a status bar at the top 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent so they know how much more they have to fill out uh, until they are checked out but this increases the conversion rate because people will go through the steps they're easy they're quick and then they will purchase so that is the key is to keep a simple well two things offer expedited ways to buy such as paypal or apple pay and then the second is break out your checkout experience into three or four short sections for your customer to fill out all right i, I want to also point this out most platforms like the, like Shopify and so forth usually has this split up option now uh, and I think what you're referring to is you know make sure and these are all events by the way like um, when someone initiates checkout that's the checkout process mm -hmm. so these are all events that are triggered with the pixel and so forth to understand where your customer is where in their journey mm -hmm. there are so when it comes to advertising efforts you know what to actually target them it did they just add to cart and leave did they actually get to the checkout and leave you could understand what your customer is doing when they actually dropped off and why understand why so when you like you said if it's one whole page you don't really know when they dropped off like was it because it was too expensive was it because um they had to enter a credit card was it because something was what was wrong shipping. it's very hard to determine however also realize this and that's why uh, you know a lot of these platforms are separated for you as well and with the shipping as well so but you also want to make it very simple that's very that's key there and also a lot of these uh including sugar and kush you have like a, a toolbar or like a bar on top to show yeah. where the customer is at in their checkout process like Correct. they're just yep. in their first um, entry and it shows like do i have to fill out four forms three forms so forth so showing that is actually a great indicator for the customer to know it's like how many steps do i have to go to, to actually check out this yeah. this damn item so that's that's very important to show that i think you wanted to also or I don't yeah know you highlight that's that. one of the benefits i know we talk about like getting people to sign up collecting their information so that they when they do come back to your store they can just automatically purchase in one purchase that's why amazon so successful but i think question two which is gonna be like, Matt, like what's a good conversion rate? Matt, Sean, what's a good conversion rate for people that come to my website and then to actually put things in your cart? So industry average, that guys depends on the product as well. If you have a thousand dollar item that you're selling, this is probably not gonna be as accurate when I say industry average is three to 4%. So for every session, so there are 10 sessions where someone comes to your website, there should be industry average is three to four percent. So actually, let's use a hundred sessions. Hundred people come to your site. Three or four of those individuals should be adding an item into your cart. That's the industry average on your conversion rate for sessions and add to carts. So those are our four examples. I just want to uh, reiterate as, as well. Those are just four examples that we really like and what features we like about those brands. There's a lot more that you need to do to uh, build a strong uh, cart page. And these are like some of the basics, but they're not too. I remember when I started my first e-commerce brand, these are the things I didn't know. And I kind of want to highlight some of them. Uh, and if you have anything, keep in mind, I, I just created a checklist just to make sure that if someone's starting a business, they understand this and we didn't miss anything. They're like, oh, well, Sean and Matt didn't say this part. But um, Key things to keep in mind when you are creating your cart page and what needs to be displayed there is number one is product summary. So showing the product's image, very important. If you could do High that. High quality image, yes, yep. very important. Um, the name of the product, the, the size of it, there's a size of it, like it's variant, like the whole name, like the name, the variant, and so forth, so the customer knows what they have in their cart. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Color or flavor as well. Yep. Shipping methods, uh, is it something that's 
if it, is it's free shipping, is it not free shipping and so forth. So that's very important as well. There's also um, an option where people could input uh, promos. So this is something I've learned as well. Shopify has a lot of limitations and I had to get a, a custom developer to do this for my sliding cart. So my cart page, uh, well actually not my cart page, my, my checkout page was the only way to create, have the ability for people to enter a promo yeah. code and for them to see a discounted price. My sliding cart didn't have that functionality. So I had to have something customized, I had to have something built by a developer to actually add that field in the sliding cart so it worked properly so the customer was able to see that discounted price. So that's another functionality that's really important. People want to enter a promo code because people are going to be asking like this. They're going to enter, they're going to ask something in the cart and they're like, well, where do I enter the promo code? They're not going to go through the whole checkout process and realize that's where they got to add it. And then you may lose the customer because the price may be too high. So that's also really important. Add, if there's a place that you can add your return policy, like there's usually these trust icons. I don't know if you've seen them. Mm -hmm. um, people build out the icons. Lock. Yep. yep, secure lock. So people know it's, it's a secure payment. Or they have their payment methods, their yep. icons there. They do sometimes you see like this 30 day free shipping or yep. not free, I mean 30 day uh, return policy. You could do free shipping if you have free shipping. You can, uh, the financing programs where like Sezzle, um, let's see, Sezzle, uh, Afterpay, yep, all those that, that you can pay in for interest free uh, breakdowns or? Yeah, those are the, um, it's, it's another payment form. Payment right? forms. Just, basically, someone could sign up. Let's say if you don't have the money, you have a great sale going on, right? You yep. don't want to miss a sale, but the customer doesn't have the amount. Let's say, if you, especially if you have a big ticketed item and they don't want to pay in, uh, pay in full, yep. they could sign up for this. They could just do a split payments, which is a great program. Uh, I think these programs, uh, they take a percentage based on their- uh, They take a percentage from, from the, the actual business owner, yeah, yep. from the sale, not the customer. Yep, so definitely check those out. And, then and make sure your make sure your cart and your checkout process is both mobile and um, desktop friendly as well. Make yep. sure it's friendly on both. Perfect, uh, I could think that's it, right? That's Anything all we got else? for right now. Guys, I hope you like this, I, like, I hope you like this format. Again, we do this very occasionally, like after like 10 or 15 brands that we discuss, we really want to t talk about some tactics that you should be implementing because these are really important stuff. And you know, these are things that you know Matt and I learn on the go as well. And these are great examples for you as a reference. So we gather up things that we've learned and then we share it with you so you could reference it and just copy the shit out of it as well because these are the guys that are spending big bucks on it. And you know, especially as a, a business that you're bootstrapping and don't have that funds to hire a big team, you want to look at these brands and see what they're doing and then mimic it as well that aligns with your brand. So if you have any questions, you could tweet at mscopac or at Sean underscore Azari. If you're listening to this on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, uh, where else are we on? YouTube. Well, YouTube, but, but I'm talking about the, the listening platforms. Give yeah, us a five-star review if you liked it, if there was helpful content. If you, have, you know a business owner that is starting a business or this type of content, you could help them share this podcast with them. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the Thumbs, thumbs up, up button or if you have any questions comment down below no. and we will see you next week there it ciao is.